Hi, yo, friends. It's me, Gorp. And this is my friend, Stick. <laughs> and welcome to Adventures in Summer Reading. Hey, friends, we need your help. Look what Stick and I found at camp the other day. Yeah, it's another sports ball. <laughs> It's not a basketball. Mr. Brian from the Frasier taught us all about those. But what do you think this one is, Stick? Well, the basketballs didn't taste good, but maybe this sports ball tastes better. No! Oh, stick! I'm beginning to think that all sports balls taste gross. Aww. Well, since we can't eat it, let's go find out what you do with it. Lace up your hiking boots, grab your pine cones, and let's go on our next adventure. Stick, you want to race? <laughs> all right, ready, set, go! <laughs> hey, get back here. I gave him a head start. He's totally going to win. Today at Camp LFPL, we're going to the Racing Louisville's practice facility to talk to a couple of their players. Will you join me? Let's go! Okay, it's me, Gorp, and I'm here to ask some great questions to some of the players today. Hello. Hey, Gorp. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. No problem. <laughs> Can you tell me your name, please? I'm Julia. Oh, Julia. So nice to meet you. So, Julia, where are you from? I am from Verona, New Jersey. Wow! Yes. You came all the way here from New Jersey? I did. That's long, amazing! Long drive. I bet. <laughs> so what position do you play? I play defense. Whoa! Mm -hmm. What does defense do? Defense? Well, <laughs> we do a lot of things. Yeah? <laughs> um, we try to take the ball from the other team. Okay. We make big tackles. Big tackles? Uh -huh. Do you get to make big points too? Is that how that I, works? I try to. I try to get up in the attack a lot. Okay. <laughs> Maybe great. too much sometimes. So since you're not from uh, Louisville, what's your favorite thing about being here? I think the just great sense of community um, just around the team and the support system that we have here is great. I also love uh, all the coffee shops, the local places. Oh, coffee's mm -hmm. great. Good yeah. ideas. If someone wanted to be on the soccer team, how could they do that? What, what do they need to do to get to be where you are today? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing that's helped me get to where I am is probably just hard work and persevering. Just Whoa. every day, like setting small goals um, to what I want to accomplish each day in order to get to the long-term goal. Oh. And, uh, that's such a good idea. Yeah. Do you hear that, guys? You gotta make goals. Oh, yeah. Not just on the field, but in life. Mm -hmm. You hear that? I got wise words, too, just like oh, yeah. you. Pound it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Who's your favorite puppet? It's me. It's me. Definitely you, definitely. Okay, yes. Sure. You for got sure. that one right. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm working on a song for your team. You wanna hear it? Yes. Tell okay, me. here it goes. Yeah. Who's that scoring goals over there? It's you. It's you. No. Uh, I'm still working on it. All right. No, no, it's good. It's a good start. All right, I'll, I'll take it back to the workshop. <laughs> thanks so much for answering my questions. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, see ya. Bye. Okay, you ready for your questions today? Bring it on. Okay, what's your name? Uh, my name is Sinclair Miramontes. Oh, nice to meet you, Sinclair. Nice to meet you too. So, what position do you play? I play midfield. Oh, midfield. Mm -hmm. That sounds exciting. You're not in the front field. You're not at the back, so you're somewhere in the middle. Right, in the what, middle. What do you do in the mid? There's no goals there, right? No, but I play a little bit of both. I do attacking and defending oh. simultaneously. Whoa, that sounds like a lot of work. Why do you have to do all that? That's just how the position goes, you know, oh. but I enjoy it. Now, where are you from, Sinclair? I am from Lenexa, Kansas. Oh, Kansas? Mm -hmm. I've never been there. Is it pretty? Yeah, it's it's pretty. It's right in the middle of the United States. Right in the middle? Whoa, I'll have to check that out sometime. Yeah, you should. So, what do you like about being in Louisville? Uh, I just really love how much support has been given to our team throughout the community around the city. We see people wearing Racing Louisville gear all the time, which is awesome. It just makes us feel so loved and welcome here, which we can't ask for anything better. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I really love the sense of community that is here. Oh, that's great. You guys have great fans, I bet. 
the best. Oh, and so what is something that you should tell fans to do if they want to become a soccer player like you? Yeah, I mean, anyone who wants to get interested in soccer when you're first starting out, I recommend using both of your feet when you practice. That's a huge thing, um, especially if you want to get to the level that we are at. You have to be able to use either one of your feet in a split second. So as much practice as you can get with that, the better. Okay, great answer. Did you hear that? Practice, practice. Now, who's your favorite puppet? Don't say Kermit. Oh, that's awkward. No, I'm just kidding. It's Gorp. It's Gorp. Oh, yeah! <laughs> You got it! <laughs> okay, I'm working on some songs for you guys. One okay. of these is going to stick. Are you ready? Let's hear it. Racing! Did you get it? It was like I was racing in a car. What do you think? Should I? I think it's great. Okay, I think you we heard should that. Use it. Sinclair said we're using it. Thanks, Sinclair. Thank you for having me. No problem. Woo. See ya. See ya. Okay, you ready for your questions? Yep. You've got all these fans. They want to know so many things about you. You oh ready? Gosh. Yep. <laughs> okay. What's your name? Um, I'm Taylor Otto. Oh, nice to meet you, Taylor. Nice to meet you. And Taylor, where are you from? Um, I'm from Cary, North Carolina. North Carolina? Mm -hmm. Is that far away? Yeah, it's about an eight-hour drive. Oh, man. I bet you miss home sometimes. Yeah, but I'm lucky enough that my parents get to come to a lot of my games. So. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. Oh, parents are the best. Yes. So what position do you play, Taylor? Um, I play midfield. Midfield. That sounds exciting. I just learned a little bit about midfield. So do you ever get to score goals? Sometimes. Um, not as much as the forwards, but every once in a while the ball pops out and we get a few shots on goal. All those flashy forwards get all the credit, don't they? Mm -hmm. That's right. But we got love for the midfielders, right? Yeah, always I, love for the midfielders. I know you got a pretty good kick. I hope you can show me one later, okay? All right, I will. But I think I can stop it. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks she can stop me. <laughs> all right. So, Taylor, well, tell me about what does someone need to do to be a soccer player like you when they get big? Mm, I think you need to work really hard, but also remember to have fun and don't be scared to take risks. Okay. Take risks, have fun. I love that. Who is your favorite puppet? Mm, me, 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 it's me. you. Yes! Oh, I got worried you left me hanging there for a second. No. Don't no, do no. that. I got nervous. <laughs> Oh, okay. Now, I'm still workshopping a couple songs. You want to hear one more? Yeah, let's hear it. All right, here it goes. R A C I N G Racing Louisville. That's great. I like that. You like it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Stick told me that one was going to work, but I'll try it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. You're the best. All right, friends. Time to hit the field and learn some skills. Let's do it. Hi, guys. My name's Julia, and this is Taylor and Sinclair. And we're going to show you some different passing and dribbling skills today that you can apply during training and in games. All right, so Taylor and Sinclair are starting off right now with two touch passing. They are using the inside of their foot to control the ball. And yeah, this is great to use within training and game environments. Now they're going to switch to some one touch passing right now. So again, using that inside of the foot, locking the ankle getting a little bit of power in there to make sure that it gets to your partner. So otherwise, if you don't have enough power, then a defender can intercept the ball. All right, next we're going to switch to some stationary uh, dribbling skills. So we're going to start off with uh, foundations. So just again, using the inside of the feet, going back and forth. Take note that they are staying in place right now and under control. They are not moving all over the place. Control and just staying balanced is really important in terms of being a good soccer player. Next, we're going to switch to toe taps. So using the sole of the foot now. Again, taking note of them staying in place. And next we're going to do the scissor move. So the scissor is a great move to do to lose a defender. As you watch right here, Taylor is taking a step to the right to lose her defender and then dragging it left. Awesome. 
Okay, next we're all going to show you a fun individual skill. All right, this first skill is called the rainbow. Ooh, beautiful. This is called the Maradona. Yes, Taylor. All right, and I'm going to juggle with my head. Thanks, guys. Hey, you guys are the best. Are, did we just become best friends? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, don't forget, finish your summer reading program and you can come watch them play. Do it, friends. See you next time. Bye. Bye. about the Louisville Free Public Library's summer reading program at lfpl.org slash summer reading. Have a great summer and happy reading! Ah, choo -choo! Ah, all aboard to Camp Shanatuck! Oh, I'm on a train! Look at me! This is amazing! <laughs> I'm here with my friend, Jesse. Oh, hi, Jesse. And you're going to teach me about archery. Oh, that's right. It's called archery. Okay, great. I can't wait to learn about archery. Oh, but Jesse, I was wondering, when did you start doing archery? Actually, I started right here at Girl Scout camp when I was really little. What? So you learned right here at camp? I did. I learned right on this platform we're standing on right now. Oh, that's so cool. But you know what, Jesse? I heard that you're really, really good at Aww. archery. <laughs> really? Yes! So, if I come to camp and I learn how to do archery, do you think I'll be as good as you? If you practice hard enough, you uh, can be as good as anyone. Well, I can practice. Let's do it. Can I watch you shoot? Sure! Okay, let's get some tins. Woohoo! See, I'm an Ambassador Girl Scout from Troop 1243, and today I'm going to be showing you guys about archery. So right here I have my bow. Of course, you all know what a bow looks like, but did you all know the parts of the bow? Obviously, we have the string right here. This little knot right here is the knock. So whenever I put my arrow on the bow, it goes right above that so that it stays in place when I shoot. These little bits right here are called the arms. They keep the bow steady. This right here is the gear. This right here is the cam. They help move the string back and forth when I shoot. And then on the arrow, this right here is also the knock. So when you put it on the bow, you put the knock on the knock, it's like a knock knock joke. These right here are the fletchings. They kind of look like feathers. They help keep the arrow flying straight when I shoot. Whenever you shoot, you gotta make sure you're following safety protocols. So whenever I shoot, I always keep my bow pointed down range or at the target. That way I don't accidentally hurt anybody. And whenever I'm holding my arrow, I always make sure that I hold it sideways and cover the point so that nobody accidentally gets poked when I'm walking with it. So, who's ready to shoot an arrow? Okay, here she goes. She's pulling it back. Steady. And what? You got it. Nice one, Jesse. That's a 10. A perfect 10. All right. You're the best. Woohoo! All right, stick. I got a great idea. Okay, just hold still. I can't pull it back. I need your help. Ready? Ready? And fire! Ah! Oh, stick! What happened? Are you okay? Speak to me! Oh, but we did get a bullseye, so that's something.
today we're going to read uh, the story about one of horse racing's great underdogs. And his name, he's got a great name, his name was Seabiscuit. And the name of this book is called Seabiscuit the Wonder Horse. It was uh, written and illustrated by Megan McCarthy and it was published by Simon & Schuster. So, without further ado, Seabiscuit the Wonder Horse. Well, back in the 1930s, times were tough. There were long lines of people just to get food. People didn't have very much. You know, it was a time called the Great Depression and uh, people needed an escape. And going to the racetrack was the perfect escape. People came from far and wide to watch their favorite horses do what? What were those horses doing? They were there to race. And I gotta tell you, those horses were sleek, elegant, muscular, well-bred, and fast. Real fast. Let me hear you all say, real fast. Well, that's true, except for one. And his name was Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit, he liked to eat. And he liked to sleep. And he hated to run. And he lost almost every race they ever put him in. In fact, his trainer would put him in a race, he'd lose. He'd try again, he'd lose again. Put him in another race, he'd lose again. And finally, you know what his trainer said? His trainer said, that's not even a racehorse. All that is, is a big, lazy dog. Who would want a racehorse like that? Charles Howard, that's who. Charles Howard lived out in California and he wanted to buy himself a racehorse, but he didn't want to spend a lot of money. So he got Seabiscuit for a bargain price. But Charles Howard, he didn't know that much about horses, so he had to hire somebody who did. And that, my friends, was Tom Smith. And Tom Smith, they called him Silent Tom. I bet you can figure out why they called him Silent Tom, right? Well, he loved to talk to horses, but he didn't like to talk to people. So Silent Tom it was. Well, now they've got their owner, we've got our trainer, we need to find a jockey. And the jockey they found was named Red Pollard. I wonder why they called him Red. Maybe it was the color of his hair, right? And guys, Red and Tom and Charles Howard all started working with Seabiscuit uh-oh, but Seabiscuit was wild. He was wild. He didn't like to be, uh, he didn't like to follow directions, but Silent Tom knew what to do. Silent Tom said, horse, the reason why, you, why you're acting all wild is because you just need some attention. So he brought in some cats and some dogs and even some chickens and those animals, they became Seabiscuit's friends. And guess what? It worked. But Seabiscuit was also, I hate to say it, he was lazy. He didn't like to work very hard. And Tom Smith said, you know what, horse? You need, a mo you need some motivation. So he brought in some other horses to race against Seabiscuit in the morning when they practiced. Guess what? It worked. But Seabiscuit was angry and stubborn. He didn't like people. You know why? Because back when he was with his old trainer, he wasn't really probably treated very good. And he didn't really trust people. But Red, the jockey, anytime Seabiscuit made a mistake, he'd pat him on the neck and say, don't worry, buddy, we're gonna try again. And pretty soon, Seabiscuit started to trust uh, Red. And he said, wait a minute, people don't have to be my enemies, they can be my friends. Check it out. The once angry and wild horse became gentle. The once lazy horse <laughs> turned out to be fast. But is anybody gonna notice? Well, it was time to put him in a race. And they put Seabiscuit in a race out in California. Guess what he did? He won. They put him in another race. Guess what he did? He won again. They put him in another race. Guess what he did? Well, he ran second, but that's still pretty good, right? Anyway, people all over the country started talking about that little horse named Seabiscuit. And word started to travel from town to town about that little horse who never gave up. Well guys, even though Seabiscuit was becoming famous, there was another horse who was even more famous. You see back here is Churchill Downs, right? Well, this horse came to Churchill Downs in 1937 and he won the Kentucky Derby. 
Not only did he win the Derby, he won the Preakness and the Belmont. And that, my friends, is called the Triple Crown. His name was War Admiral. And War Admiral was sleek, he was elegant, he was muscular, and he was fast. Everybody say, real fast. Wait, did you all hear that? Did you all hear that? That was Sam, uh, that was Sam Riddle. He's the owner of that horse. And did you hear what he said? He said that his horse could beat Seabiscuit any day. Well, Mr. Howard found out about that, and he said, uh-uh, Seabiscuit could beat War Admiral any day. So how are we gonna decide who's faster? My friends, we're gonna have a race. Just the two of them, Seabiscuit versus War Admiral. Seabiscuit traveled all the way across the country to face the mighty Triple Crown winner. But guess what? It never happened. It never happened, you know why? Because a couple days before the big race, Red was on another horse and he fell off you can see what happened. He broke his leg. And the doctor said, Red, you can't ride Sea Biscuit. We're going to have to cancel the race. The end. Wait a minute. Is that how it really ends? Do you think I would read that book to you if that's how it ended right there? No way. Because back in those days, they didn't have computers. They didn't have televisions. Uh, they, did, they, they did have radio, but they didn't have a lot of the electronics that we do. But they did have telephones. And they looked different. But Red got on the phone from his hospital bed and he called up his good buddy, the Iceman. The Iceman was a jockey too. His name was George Wolf. And he asked the Iceman, hey, will you ride Seabiscuit for me? And guess what the Iceman said? He said, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the race is on. And check it out. People came from everywhere to watch this horse race. And it was scheduled for Baltimore, Maryland in 1938. People came by car, by train, by boat. Some people even walked. Nobody wanted to miss the race. Jobs even closed early, so nobody would miss it. And if you couldn't make it to the racetrack, you listened to it on the radio. Even the president of the United States, President Roosevelt, listened to this on the radio. Well, who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Seabiscuit came out onto the track to the big roar of the crowd. War Admiral came out onto the track, another big roar from the crowd, and now it's time to see who's the fastest horse. A hush then fell over the big crowd at the racetrack. The horses twitched and the riders sat perfectly still. And they're off, said the announcer. And Seabiscuit jumps out and takes an early lead, and they're passing the crowd for the first time. And can you see it, guys? Seabiscuit still has that short lead, but War Admiral is right on his tail. And around the turn they go onto the backstretch, and it's still Seabiscuit. I can see him, guys. Seabiscuit still has that short lead, and War Admiral's not letting him get very far, and they're coming into the turn. Here comes War Admiral, and War Admiral's starting to gain on Seabiscuit as they come out of the turn. It's anybody's race from here, ladies and gentlemen. Seabiscuit and War Admiral are head in head, and here they come down the stretch. War Admiral has taken the lead. But guess what? Right when War Admiral took that lead, right when he took the lead, George the Iceman Wolf whispered down and said, don't give up, Seabiscuit, just a little farther to go. And he shook those reins and he shook them again. And ladies and gentlemen, Seabiscuit responds. And Seabiscuit is now passing War Admiral and he's drawn away. Seabiscuit leads by two. Seabiscuit leads by three. They're nearing the finish line. And the winner is Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit beat the Triple Crown winner by four lengths that day. And you never saw such a crowd go wild. Well, George the Iceman Wolf, he rode Seabiscuit into the winner's circle that day to the roar of the crowd and the flash of the cameras. And they asked Mr. Howard how he felt. And he said, this horse is, uh, is amazing because he has the heart of a lion. He never gives up. And they asked, they asked George the Iceman Wolf how he felt. And he said, I wish my old buddy Red was here instead of me, thinking about his friend back in the hospital. They asked Silent Tom how he felt. And he didn't say anything. Silent Tom, right? And guys, Seabiscuit became America's hero. Because even though back in those old days, when times were so tough, 
When people had to stand in long lines just to get food, guys, Seabiscuit gave people hope. And that's why I love the story so much, uh, Seabiscuit, the Wonder Horse, the true story of a legend. Oh boy, that was so much fun. Thank you to our friends at Racing Louisville, the Girl Scouts, and Ronnie from the Kentucky Derby Museum for that wonderful story. Stick, this is our last show. Camp is almost over, and we have to go home. Yeah, I know. Do you remember all the great things we did? Let's see. Well, there were the lemurs at the zoo. Yeah, those tails were beautiful. We saw buffalo chips at the Frasier. <laughs> Not falling for that one again, Mick. <laughs> well, I, I started an avocado diary, thanks to the Science Center. Hmm, that's been really fun. Oh, and I can break a board now. <laughs> Bet you didn't think I could do that, Stick. I gotta sign up for more classes at Huang's Martial Arts. I learned how to pitch a tent, tie knots, and hike safely from the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. We toured that most amazing cave at Squire Boone. Yeah, that was cool. No bats though, right? All the art we've seen at the Speed and the K-Mac. I weave my own fur at Locust Grove. And I performed on a stage at Kentucky Shakespeare. Oh, and we cheered on Racing Louisville. I'm pretty sure I'm in the running to be their mascot. Stick, we really had a great summer. Is your bag packed? Got your sleeping bag? Flashlight, toothbrush? I guess that's it. But hey, just because we're going home doesn't mean there still is not time to complete the summer reading program. You still have until August 7th to read all your books then, get your prizes, and make some of your own great memories. You ready, Stick? Okay. Until our next adventure! Hiya! See you next time!